Hi folks, welcome to the benchmark episode of Full Self Driving. This is where we go out on a carefully chosen route and we look at where FSD messes up, where it excels, and then on successive days, for example in bad weather or night driving, uh, or when updates to the FSD software come. We test it again and again and again and we check whether FSD is improving over time. Whether the software updates help it, whether there are any more difficulties or challenges at night time or in rain. Uh, so we'll be trying it. But this is the benchmark route and if you look over here you'll see that if I choose to edit you can see that I have four legs to the journey which correspond to each of the black pins and that is a clever way of routing yourself through various parts. If some of you are not familiar with this I'll do an episode where we talk about how to use the mapping um, features correctly uh, or uh, efficiently. Um, I can add even more points if I want to there but I'm happy with the trip. We're heading first to the um, Lonsdale Avenue area going past the Vida's restaurant up to Westview Center and then back home again. So let's get out onto the road. Leaving the Red Dragon Cave. Oh, it looks busy. Well, today, folks, is um, Canada Day. First of July in Canada. It's Canada Day and people are out and celebrating. Okay, so let's put it into FSD. The route that I've chosen includes intersections with lights and stop signs and yield and, and a circle. But in addition, it uh, includes a strip of uh, freeway driving, which gives the opportunity to see how it enters, exits, merges. Uh, most of that is very much unchanged because we always had autopilot on the freeway. But interested to see if there are any refinements to its behavior. So here, here we're coming to the first lights. Car moves across to the right. That's good. We're going straight through the intersection. Uh, I think it might... It did. It indicated to go right. It's going to come up on, on the right-hand side of this car. Because quite a lot further down, almost two kilometers, uh, it does turn right. So uh, that's the car preparing itself well in advance. As soon as it turns green, it should take off immediately. And uh, there we go. So I have no complaints about the briskness with which it in fact it takes off quite quite fast quite snappily no complaints there car ahead is turning so does it yield yeah it slows down nicely it's very hard for you the viewer to feel the motion and the momentum and the speed and the slowing down from where you are just watching the video but is it going to indicate yes it is beautiful Oh, lovely. That was good. It indicated well in advance of the bus, got into this lane. I know it's going to move across at some point, but we'll see. <clears throat> so the last time, the camera overheated and uh, turned off. So I'm going to turn the fan on a little. We'll set it to uh, low, and I'll bump up the fan to about six. Now, if I don't pay attention to the steering wheel sufficiently, I get obviously a message on there telling me to put the hands on the wheel. But if I should pick up my phone, which might or might not have happened in the past, no admissions here. If I should, it gives me a notice down there that says, please pay attention to the road. <laughs> so uh, how does it know? Ah, the camera up there. That little camera there is busy checking that one. It's busy checking exactly what I'm doing. Okay, now we're going to be going under the uh, freeway and the road has an interesting way of merging the two lanes but almost it merges in the middle of the intersection very complicated on two or three previous occasions i've actually stopped it from doing it because i thought it was going to hit the sidewalk let's see what happens the car indicated now to get into the right lane and that's um, a wise choice it's going to go straight under that bridge you see ahead of you and you do have to kind of learn to not be too embarrassed when cars behind think that you're a bad driver or you're crazy. So here we go. There are two lanes now that will go through the intersection. But this lane merges. See the arrows? And it merges very quickly. 
I have no idea why it didn't merge sooner, why it didn't begin merging even before the intersection, and that would have been a lot better. But look, I got through that intersection. It correctly merged, and it's now taking me right on 19th, which is what I had asked it to do. Indicator. Of course, when you turn, uh, you get a camera view of that side of the car from behind. So it shows there's no cyclists coming, and that's a really cool thing. So. Okay, that was firm, but smooth. Uh, steering wheel didn't jerk around. Now we have a hump coming up here. Is it going to slow down? Yes! Oh, that's amazing. That is very, very good. Stop, st stop sign ahead. I'm just going to vent this uh, stream of air up onto the camera. I think I'll do mine the same. And uh, there we go. So as you can see, there's a long straight stretch ahead, but we do have a stoplight at the very bottom of this hill. <laughs> We're going down a pretty steep hill, and the car is braking well in advance. And in Canada, it does come to a complete stop. No rolling stops in Canada. It stops properly, and then goes through. So here we go, we're heading um, toward Lonsdale. Let's have a look where that is. Okay, it wants me to touch. Okay, here's a hump again. It slows. That's fine. It's, I wouldn't slow any more than it did right now. Another hump coming up. <laughs> very good. That is very good. In the beginning, it kind of ignored them and it blithely sailed over humps and you were kind of rocketed into the air, but it's becoming very civilized. Another four-way stop. Now, and it goes. It saw the truck on the left, but the truck on the left got there after we did. So it realized that it was our turn and it moved. I'm not touching the wheels, the pedals. Uh, I've got a hand on the wheel here just because you have to. So we're going across this intersection now. Well, listen, right off the front, that's very impressive so far. All the way from home to Lonsdale Road, that's quite a journey. It's done a remarkably good job. I haven't felt stressed or panicky. Right, now it moves up to the line. And I had to intervene there, so let's just touch that. And there's the dog. All right, we'll slow down for that. Uh, so what it did there was it moved into the intersection and then it stopped instead of moving boldly forward it stopped so here we are we've got a left turn coming up indicator camera on the left side all working beautifully now this is a tricky intersection you can't easily see what cars are coming but there we go very nice Very nice. We've got quite a long run down here now to uh, 3rd Street. So we have several um, stop signs, four-way intersections. We have a set of lights up ahead. And I do think that we have a um, traffic circle coming up too. I've got to keep eyes open on all sides because I think the car is seeing everything. But, you know, you never really know. Yeah, this is not a stop sign, it's a pedestrian crossing. You know what it did? It slowed down for that double pedestrian crossing. It just perceptibly slowed down. Now we are coming up behind a car which is going to turn. I wonder if it'll go around him or wait for it to turn. No, it just waited. That's good. That's exactly what I would have done. I did, would not have wanted to go into that narrow little turn and uh, risk getting stuck, so car did the right thing. Here we are, the road cut. Oh, no, no, it's in the wrong lane. Oh, no, you see, it's... <laughs> I'm going to have to get out of this, record that, and now somehow I have to get across there, and I'm in the wrong lane for that, so I'm going to have to indicate now 
look a little embarrassed and um, take my chances with this guy on the right and the guy behind and hope that he takes pity on me. So the car did not move to the lane that allowed for going through the intersection. It stayed in the left turn lane, but it did put its indicator on. But that doesn't help. I'm already at the lights. I saw I recorded that. Can I hear? We can just try. No, this bastard. I'm sorry. This bugger is not letting me in. And there's exhaust fumes coming out the pipe at the back there. Terrible. So let's get back into FSD. Okay, there's a truck parked ahead that's a little on the on the road. It's managed to get around that very easily. And here's a circle. So now, does it know that it's got to wait? Yes, there it goes. Oh, where the heck is it going? It's it didn't it didn't complete the circle around the traffic lights and now it's got to reconfigure that is not good that is not good so what is it doing turning right kind of rerouting i think yeah that took us completely off the route now it's going to turn around to come back to where we should have been i think it's waiting. There's a massive truck coming. Please, car, don't go. Don't go. All right. Road looks uh, not clear yet. That was not good. Um, the traffic circle was easy. It just had to go around it and carry on straight in the same direction. Instead, uh, it went a quarter way around and then turned inexplicably. So we did record that. Okay, here we go. And the car takes off <laughs> briskly, <laughs> pretty briskly. Um, and that's obviously going to go back to the route. Well, look, it did re-navigate, but it didn't show it on there. Not a bit of it. So here we are. No, what on earth is it doing? I'm going to have to uh, just get my way around here, get back into that road. This, that was a disaster. That really did not work. All right, let's re-engage. Once again, coming up to the truck that was parked a little way out. And uh, now comes this dreaded circle. Let's see what it does. No, it was going to turn. It was going to go right, and uh, we'll record that. Now, I'm just going to stop right over here, just to make sure that our route is still active, by tapping continue the trip up there. Okay, let's re-engage. Hump, hump. Yeah, I didn't really see that one. Another hump. It did see that one. So it learned quickly. Okay, let's see what it's doing. It wants me to turn left a little. Yeah, it's very cautious when coming up to a stop sign. I mean, I would go far more briskly than that. Okay, you can go. Now it's going to turn right. <laughs> There's a hump ahead. It's going to turn right. It's doing this very well. Following the very convoluted road, and that's good. Now uh, it's waiting, even though it's not actually a stop sign. <laughs> See, a lot of indecisiveness. So it, it didn't quite know whether to move forward. Another hump. That's okay, we were going slow. Right, we're heading straight up now. This is tricky because you can't really see the traffic until you get forward and the car creeps in order to... There it goes. 
<laughs> there was a taxi coming from that direction, but um, it was it moved fast. It moved really fast. Obviously, calculated that there was no risk. So now we're coming up to a stop sign. Should be no problem at all with a speed limit of 40 kilometers. So we will see here if it yeah it's hit 40 kilometers already and max of 45 because I tend to go five over which is generally acceptable. You'll never get fined for that. Okay, so we're, another hump. And it was going slow for that, that's okay. We're heading right up now. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay, with no cars behind and no cars ahead. It took a really wide uh, path around that woman who was just opening the door of her car. It moved right into the other lane, crossed a solid line, but it's meant to do that because safety of people comes first. So it had seen there were no cars ahead, no cars behind. That was good. I like that. So at this point, it should indicate, show what's behind me and wait patiently for the lights. Now, please, move confidently. All right. Okay, that's not bad. I'm happy with that. It tends, there's a tendency for the car, the steering wheel, to do that when it's going around a corner. But sometimes it surprises, and it does not, and it gets around very, very smoothly. So, blue indicator flash on there, telling me put your hands back on the wheel, and now we're going right. And in fact, at this point, I'm going to edit the trip and remove the Westview Shopping Center. And that will get us straight onto the freeway. Now, we could turn right on red, but with all the cars coming, that was not a safe move. So, it seems it's just going to wait. Um, we could go right. Is there somebody behind me? Yes, there is. So, let, I'm just going to kick out of it. I'm going to kick out of it. And uh, move into the off-ramp. There we go. Okay. So now we're heading back home and we're using a little strip of freeway. A, sh a short stretch of freeway. And we have to see here how the car handles. My oh, goodness. Ah, you see, then people look at you and they think, this guy's crazy. And you can hardly shout out the window, it's the car, it's FSD. So here we're going to merge. So why didn't it merge? There it is, now it's merging. Whoa! It saw that car, that white car over there and it uh, chickened out and then jumped back into the lane but again it was kind of grabby it wasn't smooth and predictive it didn't actually look at the car and think maybe I can't go yet so it's not perfect and um, right now we're in the correct lane to go off the exit ramp to get back onto Lynn Valley and again you can see it's picking up the motorbike and the truck it's very, very aware. And another bike coming up. And there it is. Now, when cars come in from the right-hand side, I found that it merges very intelligently, very politely. Uh, it predicts it, and it's actually very good. I haven't had one complaint about other cars merging into our lane. It's done it very well. 80 kilometers per hour, and it's showing 80 kilometers per as the maximum speed, 85, because I've set it to an offset of five kilometers per hour. So coming up ahead, we've got this big loop, it's kind of a semi-clover leaf here, and that's how we get back onto Lynn Valley Road. So just ahead, it's gonna begin by indicating. There it is. This is a bit of a sharp off-ramp, so it's gotta reduce speed pretty quickly. 
it says 30 kilometers an hour the car did not seem to notice it still has 80 <laughs> ridiculous anyway it's also slowing down just because it is a corner it is a tight corner now we go right here and it did that's good and now there's a pedestrian crossing but no one there so I think it will just go straight through as it did and there's a bicycle ahead now that could cause it either to jump lanes or to slow down there we go it's indicating look at that that's good yeah that was good so slow down for the bike waited for the first opportunity indicated left and changed lanes that was good safety of the cyclist was paramount now we're on a straight road with a number of intersections and flashing lights and um, it's great now of course with the old autopilot you'd have to tap the stalk or touch the accelerator to get it to go through a green light with FSD it just goes so you're being taken on a tour of the famous Lynn Valley area what is it indicating for <laughs> sometimes it'll put the indicator on for a few seconds and then turn it off so we have a light ahead and uh, okay all good nothing bad happened there we have a whole string of green lights ahead of us which is very unusual I guess they know I'm videoing this still green and uh, this is going to change and uh, lights are flashing which means there's no chance of it changing in the near future but we do have a red ahead now I do like that the car is seeing that and slowing very very gradually you know in the past it would speed right up to the car and brake at the last minute this was I couldn't have done it smoother myself if I were in manual control so really good no complaints there at all this is the last actual traffic intersection before I get to my home but there is a pedestrian crossing a light controlled pedestrian crossing and if the lights are flashing it'll be interesting to see how it handles that but right now I uh, see ahead that the lights are off no one's there uh, it does slow down when it goes through the intersection and if the lights were flashing it would slow down even more that, that time it didn't made me a liar what's good is that it sees parked trucks vans cars vehicles on the side and it gives them a wide berth I have no complaints about that behavior now there's a major complaint here I'm gonna to have to just check there is a car behind but I guess I can get away with it when it reaches my home it stops in the middle of the road at the pedestrian crossing so watch this behavior indicates now it's going right and it stops <laughs> and says destination reached on the corner it says destination reached I'm stopping here in the middle of Lynn Valley Road so that <laughs> I forgot to record that but I'll do it now it might be too late so I'll wait for these people to go give them an opportunity they're all coming back from Lynn Canyon which is a place that kids go to kill themselves I mean that literally so many have died jumping off ridiculous cliffs uh, getting caught in an undertow um, we regularly have fire engines and ambulances coming down this road all the way into the canyon it's a wonderful place it's a great park but you know people see it on YouTube and they think they can do it and they come and do it so now we're gonna back up now I could never envisage the car performing this maneuver I am making sure there's no kids I got to turn here and then going down the driveway is an interesting piece of maneuvering where I have to look out the mirror and get the lion going down to Dragon Cave so you know when people say we'll have total full self-driving garage to garage uh, not for a long time not for a long time this maneuver here is super uh, challenging even for a person so hmm. 
from doing it many times, it becomes easier. And then I normally move forward, straighten out and just go back in. There we go. Back right up and come to a stop. As you saw on the trip, there were a few things that caused me to have to break out of autopilot. But on the whole, it's very impressive. Now, do bear in mind, today is sunny. It's Canada Day, but that has nothing to do with FSD. It's sunny. It's clear. Visibility is good. Everything is um, highly visible. It's not nighttime. It's not heavy rain, which is very characteristic of North Vancouver. So that's the benchmark route. I'm going to be making the journey on successive days when the weather is very different and the time of day is different. Um, I'm also going to do the same thing when software updates occur. And when I'm getting a new update on there, uh, I, it'll be a good opportunity to take it on the same route. But you see, the value of a benchmark is that you know where the car typically messes up. And then when you take it again, if that behavior has improved, it's clearly due to FSD learning or becoming improved. So that's it for the first trip on the benchmark route. Join me next time as I check how FSD is improving. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, now would be a great opportunity down there. Tap on the subscribe button, the notification button, and then you'll never miss an upcoming episode. If you haven't done that already, please do that. Cheers for now.